Episode 86, Interview with Wedding Photographers Rochelle and Aaron Foltz. Welcome to the Visionary Variety Podcast, where we cover cool stuff like photo, video, film, books, and technology. So switch on your brain and enjoy the show. You are listening to the Visionary Variety Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode. My name is Daniel Grove, and I'm the host of this show. And on this episode, we have with us Aaron and Rochelle Foltz, some old friends of mine. Why don't you guys say hi? Hello, Hello. everyone. <laughs> I am so excited to have you on the podcast. This is going to be awesome. Yes, we're so excited. We were surprised to to get this invite, and uh, we didn't even know you were doing a podcast. <laughs> I had so, no idea. This is great. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's something weird. Facebook's algorithm sucks. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, yes, we're finding it does. that out. But I have not seen any of your work in years. Like, literally, I haven't seen your work until Julia mentioned, she mentioned you every now and then. She's like, have you seen the recent stuff from Aaron and Rochelle? And I'm like, no, Facebook hates me and doesn't think that you guys are worthy of me seeing. I don't know what's <laughs> up with the algorithm. Uh, I were friends. I've liked your page. But apparently that's not enough. So uh, I went and checked out your work. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you guys have just gotten so good. It's amazing. And then I had this idea. I said, you know what? I got to have these guys on the podcast. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Daniel. Well, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, I guess Julia can see us more than you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky uh, her. Facebook. Yeah, Facebook deems you worthy of being seen by her, but not me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird well, how Facebook works anymore. For real. I've ranted about it many, many times on the podcast before. We actually had a whole episode dedicated to <laughs> hacking the algorithm, getting the most you can out of organic reach and all the weird tricks you have to do. It was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the end, it's they're they're doing their thing and yep. they have ownership. So Yeah. Quote unquote, a free service, not really free. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into our discussion today. We're going to be talking about wedding photography because that's your specialty. And uh, I think it's going to be really great for me as well as the listeners to learn some tricks from you guys, hear y'all's story, and just to kind of absorb, you know, a little bit of your success. Maybe it'll rub off on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're excited. I, I I'm excited. To think that we can even be talking about ourselves like this. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you, you finally made it. You're on a podcast. It's real. Whoa. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> All right. Well, first of all, why don't you tell our audience, where are you from and what do you do? We actually live just down the street from where I was born. So <laughs> wow. in Oldsmar, Florida. So just a little town outside of Tampa, Tampa, Florida. We've lived here for six years. Yep. Six years. I'm good. What about your show? <laughs> I'm from Colorado. So long ways away from home, but I feel like we get the best of both worlds with the mountains because we can go visit my parents yeah. and we live here at the beach. It doesn't really get any better than that. Absolutely. Wow. How far are you from the beach? Um, Depends on what beach. Yeah. Make us jealous. <laughs> oh, man, you true. got multiple beaches. <laughs> well, yeah. We have a little bay that's mm -hmm. the Old Warner Tampa Bay. Um, and we're just literally, you, down walk, the street. you can walk right down to it. And then um, like the main beaches, I'd say probably like Clearwater Beach, the famous one is probably 30 minutes um, with traffic and then. Um, we've got Honeymoon Island that's 20 minutes that we really love. Now, in a primarily beach city, does that get old with photography? Do you get tired of people asking for beach photos or do the locals not want that anymore? What's that like? You know what? <laughs> I won't ever get tired of beach sessions. <laughs> that's kind of hard to say. But to me, that's home. I mm -hmm. love the light. I love the freedom of just kind of being able to run wherever you want to. Yeah. And the water. It's it's peaceful. Magical. Cool. Yeah. I've grown up here. So um the beach has become, you know, a little overdone for me in in times I I feel. But <laughs> beach fatigue. When it comes to photography on the beach, I think my biggest thing is as long as you can give me some texture, um, whether it be <laughs> in the sky or in the water, whether it be rocks or something like I'm fine. But when you literally have just white sand, <laughs> white sky, <laughs> yeah, white sky, it's just, it's like, okay, I mean, this is a little bland, you know, so 
got to get creative with your lighting then. <laughs> right. You exactly. do. Nice challenge. High speed sync or something. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, I mentioned earlier that you guys are some longtime old friends of mine. Uh, so just a little background story with us. Uh, Rochelle and I went to the same ministry school in Austin, Texas. We did. Yes. Yep. We made it through. Our class started with, I think, 12 or 13, and then we ended up with four graduates. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were like the last of the classes too, right? That's true. Yeah. Yep. The, the the school kind of like went offline or went, I don't know, online or something like that. And when we graduated, maybe that was our fault. I don't know. <laughs> it, it was good times though. Yeah. A good three years full of interesting memories in Austin, Texas. <laughs> yes. I know. I get to see Josh in Kenya here in a few mm-hmm. months. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Those are the other two graduates. So it's me, Rochelle, and Josh in Kenya. We made it through. We're the survivors of IFTA. Uh, <laughs> 2011, <laughs> right? We graduated. Oh, gosh. I, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Because I got a job right after that. And it was 2011, yeah. <laughs> wow. That oh, seems man. so long ago. I know. I remember you being our photographer, yes. kind of side photographer at our wedding in mm-hmm. Austin. You know, that's so crazy to think about that. That is Hello. true. You, you know did what? shoot our wedding, Daniel. Yeah. yeah. And let's think about that for a second. <laughs> we had no, <laughs> no idea not, not even a single thought of photography Absolutely in our life Can I take credit? At that time. Can I take credit for this? <laughs> I, you know, sure, let's, yeah. Let's too. say yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> your, your engagement session wasn't half bad either. I was pretty proud of no, that, that back so in my day. Fun. No, I still have those photos too. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I remember meeting you, Aaron, for the first time. I was like, who's this tall, long, shaggy haired guy? I don't know about him. <laughs> But you know what? We warmed up pretty good together, and uh, here we are. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> Very cool. Now, back in those days of college and ministry school, that was between 2008 and 2011, um, that's when I got really serious about my photography. I started looking at it as a potential business and really trying to make it into some kind of profitable business. I, I came up with uh, pricing strategies and you know, I really looked at my stuff as worth money, uh, which really changes everything, you know, <laughs> when you when you believe in yourself, which sounds so cheesy, but when you believe in your work that it's worth, you know, X amount of money and you start demanding that uh, politely, of course, from your clients, like you, you can go to new levels. And that's a kind of an always progressing journey of the photographer Absolutely. is realizing I got to have a living. I need to pay my bills and have a family, but I want to do it by doing photography. So what do I need to charge to make that happen, you know? Right. Exactly. So those years are really crucial for me. And Rochelle, I, I kind of feel like you were starting photography later in those years. Am I remembering that right? When did you start doing photography? You know, we started doing photography after we had our daughter. Okay. Yeah. It We bought a cheap camera off of Craigslist, literally uh-huh. in the ghetto. <laughs> nice. The guy... Ended up being a Christian, and we oh. sat in his house, I don't know, maybe in, for <laughs> two, three hours, yeah. talking yeah. to this guy. He was from oh. India. Wow. Yep. yep. Bought the camera so that we could just take really nice pictures of Paisley, and yeah. somehow it just kind of morphed from wow. just so wanting to take pictures of Paisley to here we are now, full that, time. That's a yeah. classic mom photographer story right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. And you know what? What was that? A Nikon D3200? Yeah. 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 (laughs) Very nice. Well, before we get going into our interview part of the show, where can our listeners, let's say they're sitting at home on their computer, hopefully not driving, uh, (laughs) where can our (laughs) listeners find your work and where can they follow you online? On Facebook, we are Paisley Sunshine Photography. Mm -hmm. And on Instagram, we are Paisley Sunshine Photo. Yep, at Paisley Sunshine Photo. Websites we have, PaisleySunshine.com. Yep, (laughs) PaisleySunshine.com. Sorry, there's two websites, so it gets confusing. And then we have PaisleySunshineWed.com. Y'all's Facebook and Instagram is similar to mine. I'm I'm Daniel Grove Photography on Facebook, but on Instagram I shortened it, Daniel Grove Photo. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It just makes sense with Instagram. Yeah, Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. easier to type that in than all those youngins. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Just kidding, youngins. Um, (laughs) Awesome. Well, Rochelle, you've been doing photography for how many years now? And when did you start doing it with Aaron? Um, You know, Aaron and I have been doing this together from the very beginning. Yeah, we do. Um, He goes along with the photo shoots and usually ends up being about 50-50 on who shoots what. Sometimes when we're pressed for time, I'm just uh, naturally, I can 
direct people better and keep everything kind of organized and keep it flowing. So Aaron will shoot so that I can kind of keep us on track and do awesome. everything that we need to do. Um, sometimes it's I shoot more, he shoots less. It just kind of really depends on the session. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it sounds like y'all really complement each other with you kind of with the, the administrator wrangler type personality and then Aaron being the creative and the get it done kind of guy. Like, right. Does that kind of work together? Yes. Yeah. You know, Rochelle's got the creative too, but, mm-hmm. um, I, I, the administrative side, <laughs> you don't quite have as much of, <laughs> you know, but here's the crazy thing is I, I've taught for seven years. So I, I, I figured out a way to do it. Yeah. You know, I organized math courses and, tests and exams. So like I learned how to do it, but I just, I don't know. I, I'm so scatterbrained um, <laughs> because of, I guess my creativity, I guess that, yeah. you know, Rochelle really kind of hones that and, and really uh, awesome gives us a strong foundation with that. So then tell me what it's like shooting as a married couple. Is there any like pros or cons to that? <laughs> what is that like? You know, I, I think there will probably be a ton of, you know, husband and wives that, would not probably <laughs> be able to do this, you know? And they might not be husband and wife for very long. Right, <laughs> right. And, you know, sometimes I'm just very impressed with us and how we're able to kind of overcome some of the things, you know, in the middle of maybe like, you know, a, a photo shoot or something. Um, <clears throat> but I think we just, we, we kind of know why we're doing it yeah. and, and That's important. why we're there. And I think that just helps us kind of overcome maybe the little moments of, um, clashing with each other, but um, I mean, creative for the differences most part, we call them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, even working in general with your your husband or wife um, mm-hmm. is a difficult thing. Um, but I know that from the very beginning, when we got married, that was our dream, and we've always been able to do that. We've always been able to work together and and be under the same roof for a long long periods of time. Nice. Um, without having too much struggle or issue, which is a very, very positive thing and very good yeah. thing for what we're trying to do right now. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, my wife occasionally has brought it up. She's like, you know, do you think I could do photography with you? Like, do you think I could learn? Because she's not exactly the creative. She's not like an artist brain. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so that that's an interesting discussion. Can someone that's not artistic learn it? I'm not sure yet. I haven't really had that challenge quite yet. Uh, I train a lot of photographers and people that already have some amount of, you know, eye or creativity. But I've never tried to take tackle someone that's totally not an artist. <laughs> um, yeah. And and I've thought about what that would be like, like how fun that might be. But it also the real world might hit and be like, oh, this is not what I thought it would be. I think you can technically train someone. Yeah. And um, and even, you know, I mean, there's just so much material out there. And I know that we're always, you know, looking at, you know, all these photography groups that we're in. We're always looking and and challenging ourselves with with maybe something that they come up with and, and it helps me kind of like jump off of that. You know, it's kind of like a diving board for, mm-hmm. for new ideas and thoughts. But I mean, I guess you could kind of consolidate in your brain a nice little library of, of everything that you've seen from others and, and mimic that, you know, totally. even if you aren't creative. That's probably true. All right. Well, let's talk about y'all's wedding photography. Let's start off with kind of your vision. So what is the why? Why do you guys do and why do you guys love wedding photography? I think the best way to start this answer is to start from the beginning. Um, Go for it. We had done a family session, which we started photography with families mm-hmm. um, because we were doing our child Paisley. Right. And and then for some reason, some people started wanting us and then we started doing that. And <laughs> so family some crazy was, reason. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then we just were doing families. That's yeah. it. And then... I had no plan for weddings. No plan. <laughs> I didn't even want to consider weddings, to be honest. Yeah, I didn't even, yeah, I, I didn't have any idea what a wedding, photographing a wedding was even <laughs> like, or I don't know. It, just, it wasn't really a thought. So then mm-hmm. we had done um, their family session and then they were just very like, like they wanted us to do their wedding, like, and she was going to have it that way. She no asked us three times yeah. and I nice. said, no. Very demanding. <laughs> And I don't really know why we caved and said, okay, we'll do it. Yeah. Thank goodness for Angie. Yeah. (laughs) That is so true. And so we did the wedding, right? And I remember we finished and you were like, oh my gosh, I never want to do that again. That was so stressful, (laughs) right? Yeah. I was like, okay, weddings are not for us. Mm -hmm. We're done. Mm -hmm. Let's, we'll just stick to our families. It's fine. 
Yeah. And yeah. then um, And then I, I I was thinking the opposite. I was like, I really kinda like this. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did say that. That was fun. The reception yeah. was fun. Yeah, it was exciting. We started there. What possessed us to do it again? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we got I got an email one day from a couple that lives in Texas, ironically. Mm-hmm. And she was like, We saw your photos and we really loved your photos. Do you do weddings? Can you shoot our wedding? And I'm like, um... For the right price? <laughs> I don't really know. Like, I don't know if I really want to shoot another wedding. Mm-hmm. And so I talked to Aaron about it when he got home, and he was like, you have to do it. You have to do it. Well, come to find out their wedding date was on a function that Aaron had at school that Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, there's no way we're shooting this or I'm shooting this because you won't even be here. I don't even want to do this. And he's like, no, our best friend is a photographer too. Yes. Jennifer Martin photography. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And Look her up. She's, she's amazing. She's been a huge, huge help in us getting awesome. to where we are. Aaron was like, text Jen, ask her if she'll help you shoot this wedding. So I did. And she was like, yes, I'll come help you shoot this wedding It'll be fine. We'll have a blast doing it. And I was like, okay, I will say yes to this girl. <laughs> and I remember just feeling so sick to my stomach over the <laughs> nerves of like having to shoot this wedding, not fully knowing anything about wedding. Uh oh, that's a very scary feeling. <laughs> it is a very scary feeling. I would not suggest doing that. <laughs> <laughs> right? I would not suggest that either. <laughs> but thankfully, Jen, our friend, had a wedding a few months before ours and she's like hey come second shoot with me so I did I was nervous the entire time because she's (laughs) so good she's so experienced in all of this I know literally nothing so I went in second shot and it actually was a lot of fun and I came home to Aaron and I was like okay well that was fun I I think we can do this so the whole few months leading up to our second wedding, Mm -hmm. basically. I was so nervous. I was so nervous the day of. And (laughs) I got to the salon where the bride was getting ready and it just, it was a piece of cake. And her bridesmaids were amazing. They all just were so chill, so laid back. And then they were one of my first look clients. Mm -hmm. And he cried when he saw her (laughs) and I was like, Oh man. Okay. Maybe we have been missing something. And I mean, they didn't have a traditional reception. We went to a restaurant Mm. and they kind of had like this little get together and this little dinner and a few dance moments here and there. And I remember leaving that evening being so sad that their wedding was over. Oh. <laughs> and so sad that we had been friends for, I don't know, probably six to nine months, chatting over the phone every now and then about wedding stuff. And then all of a sudden it was just over. So it was like, okay, well... Maybe we can shoot weddings. I kind of miss it. I kind of miss our friends, our new friends. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't really pursue weddings because we were still in that family market and marketing for families. And we had, I remember Jen tagged us in something on Facebook for the company that we got started with Mm -hmm. looking for second shooters. And she tagged us in it. At that time, she was an associate shooter for the company. Ooh. And I was like, oh, man, I'm really nervous. They're really good. Their style's completely opposite of ours. So that's kind of nerve wracking in itself. And somehow Jeff emailed us and was like, hey, can you second shoot? And I'm thinking, OK, well, I don't know if I really want to go second shoot for a totally new company that's so good. But maybe Aaron and I could do this together. So I messaged him and I was like, hey, we're a husband and wife team. Can we do this together? Like, you don't have to pay us any differently. We'll come just shoot together, help do whatever you need. Again, here we go. We're driving an hour to go shoot our first wedding with them. I'm so nervous the whole drive. 
and getting there being so nervous because we had never met the lead photographer. We've never fully worked with this company. And it ended up being a blast. Mm -hmm. It just, the whole rush of the wedding day and going through all of the emotions that you go through on wedding day, there's not really any words that can describe that kind of feeling and being a part of somebody else's day. So then it was like, okay, we'll second shoot as much as you need us to. And each Mm -hmm. time it was so fun. It's like when we were all done, you're exhausted, your feet hurt, your back hurt. But there's also this rush and this excitement of, oh my gosh, we just got to be a part of something so incredibly amazing. (laughs) And the beginning of somebody's adventure, like how can you not do this? Right, yeah. Weddings are a uh, just an explosion of emotion and fun and love. Now, there's some weddings, some couples you get that uh, it's not quite that. <laughs> <laughs> this but is true. From me talking with you guys, it sounds like you all have had a pretty good streak of great clients, which is awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I just I think about on all these um, couples that we've got the opportunity to meet and they really are the the heroes of of our of our thing of our business and yeah it's just it's so neat to uh to be um their photographers i, I just feel like it's an honor and it's yeah. I, I i know that for us um we think of photography as such a vital part of a wedding mm-hmm. and um when they choose us it's it's not just oh okay cool like it's it's another we job. Jump up and down every time we yeah, get. It. I, I tell them I am the lucky photographer that gets to capture your big day. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> they could have yeah. gone with so many hundreds of other options, from the freebie Craigslist photographer to some other way more expensive guy, but they got me, and yeah. um, you know that's a great feeling. So it I is. consider myself very lucky, uh, even though I've worked myself to that point. I deserve <laughs> it, in a sense. But you know they, they picked me. So you yep. got to make sure your clients understand that you uh, greatly appreciate them hiring you. Absolutely. Now, I'd like to ask this next question to each of you individually. So, Aaron, I'll ask you first. Okay. What does it take to be a good wedding photographer, to be a great wedding photographer? In your oh, opinion? man. All right. So. <laughs> Loaded question, I know. <laughs> no, I know not everybody does this or not everybody shoots in manual, but I think that's probably a big thing is, is really knowing um, your camera well. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're going to go through a lot of different lighting situations and circumstances throughout the entire day and being able to flex along the way so that you're not missing a shot, um, missing just a beautiful natural moment. Yeah. Um, that, that's a big key. Um, another thing that I've learned along the way is, is how important it is to, um, be a little persistent when it comes to where you want them to be for a photo or maybe they need to do it again just one more time because it just wasn't, you know, you didn't get it right. Yeah. Um, I think that's a big thing. And it's, it's sometimes it's nerve wracking because it's like, Oh, well, I'm not going to look very professional if I ask them to do this again or something, but um, just, they want the best pictures. And I think, um, if you keep that in mind, your persistence will definitely pay off in the end. Um, I think connecting, um, which we'll probably talk that talk about that later, um, but just connecting with your, you know, like for instance, with um, when I'm with the groom and the groomsmen, like mm-hmm. being able to connect with them and and just jump into that um, hangout time with them, I feel is really important. So that you're not this awkward guy just standing there (laughs) with a camera over their heads, you know, Uh, just having an eye for just the spur of the moment things that happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, you know, maybe mom's crying as they're standing there in front of the altar Mm -hmm. and you have to turn that camera backwards and and get that. (laughs) Whip it around. Yeah. (laughs) I've done that so many times. Just flip around, take it and go back to the front. (laughs) Exactly. It's, It's really, you have to be very aware of your surroundings. And I feel like, I think those are my main thoughts right now of, of what a really good wedding photographer. Yeah. There's moments happening all around you and you got to be ready to, to capture them. Hopefully you capture them correctly and with some creative, you know, touch that's a tall order, but the better you get as a wedding photographer and as a photographer in general, the more equipped and more natural that will all become. Exactly. Now Rochelle, what about you? What does it take to be a great wedding photographer? I think 
just beyond the technical side that Aaron mentioned, it's being able to be at peace Mm -hmm. and be super low key and being able to flex when you need to flex. A lot of the times, you know, our brides are pretty nervous or they're kind of stressed out on, you know, just the fact of getting through an entire day or at least getting through like the hair and makeup portion and getting to the actual ceremony. Um, here in Florida, our weather is so very unpredictable like that Texas. it <laughs> could be sunshine one moment and then it yeah. could be pouring rain another moment. Oh, and boy. they, you know, often can't see past you really what their dream and their vision is for the day. So it's kind of hard for them to make a decision on the fly. Mm. So you kind of have to be the one that is all eyes, all ears, everything for that bride so that you can help m- make the decision with her. Um, like for instance, several weeks ago at a wedding, the ceremony was supposed to be outside, but then it ended up pouring, even oh. though all of our phones are saying 0% chance of rain. Oh my gosh, no. It's pouring outside. <laughs> we don't really have time in our timeline to be able to kind of wait out the rain. So it's like, what do you do in that moment? Thankfully, she had a really great day of coordinator (laughs) who could kind of make those decisions for us. But sometimes you don't have a coordinator or a day of coordinator that's there to help you make that decision. So you have to do your best to help figure out the situation on the fly. Mm -hmm. And um, I think connection to... That's a must Mm -hmm. for us and for weddings because when we come in on wedding day, I want to feel like I'm best friends with that bride or best friends with that groom just because there's something so authentic and so real in those connections with somebody that you just aren't going to get when you just show up and you're like, oh, hey, I'm following you around with a camera all day. It's <laughs> That's awkward. There's got to be a connection. I feel, and I don't hope this doesn't come off as true, but I, I feel sorry for photographers that are not social, like they're not people, 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 persons. That's yeah. Weird. Um, because that's, <laughs> man, what a disadvantage they're doing to their client and their service by not being able to connect with people. And uh, that's something you, maybe that's something you can learn. I don't know. For myself, I'm very, very social, like, I can make best friends with someone on death row in like 10 minutes. And, you know, that's just me. Um, I love meeting brand new people right off the bat and knowing their story. Uh, yep. So that's me. But uh, that connection is a must for weddings. Big time. Yeah. They need to trust you. I agree. I agree with that. Absolutely. This brings us to the next question, which I'm very curious about. How do you guys represent yourself or introduce yourself to someone who just very first contacts you or maybe the first meeting with a potential bride and groom I mean, how do you tell them who you are and why they should choose you? When I get an email inquiry for a wedding, I have our standard email that generally gets sent out to everybody initially. And it's like, hey, we're so excited that you emailed us and got in touch and even thought of us for your big day. Mm -hmm. And I try to include something personal in that email. But then at the end, I'm always like, we just want to connect with you. Can we set up a time to where we can call you, sit down with you, whatever it is, so that we can meet you guys and get to know you guys? Um, We used to do a lot of in-person consultations right off the bat. We've just gotten really busy and are about to hit busy season. So usually anymore, it's a video chat with whoever we're going to meet with. That's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. That way we can see them and they can see us and Mm -hmm. it's no guessing of, okay, I wonder what they look like. I wonder who they are, but (laughs) we can connect right then and there. I've showed up to some weddings where it was that deal where I could not and didn't have the luxury of meeting them and I didn't know what the bridegroom looked like. So I walk into the preparation room and I'm looking around (laughs) thinking, all right, which of these beautiful women is the bride? I don't know. (laughs) It's so awkward, man. Yeah, I hate that. (laughs) <laughs> Definitely yeah. video chat. If you can't meet with them in person, it's so simple. Between Facebook, Duo, FaceTime, I mean. When we actually get on the phone call, we kind of just make small talk. 
I want to feel like we can connect with them and they mm -hmm. can connect with us. And so it's a lot of questions for them. Like, how did you guys meet? How long have you been together? What's your engagement story? I want to know all of the details. I want to know what they do for a living. I want to know if they've lived here in Florida or if they've moved here to Florida, mm -hmm. why they moved here. What was it like growing up as kids? I just want to know all those little details right off the bat. Yeah. And so we find a way to connect in all of those little details and be on their level. Yeah, right. It's a genuine desire to get to know these people. Yeah. Um, like we said earlier, like, I mean, these are the heroes of, of what we do. To hear their stories and hear where they came from and um, maybe how they met, um, how they got engaged. It's just like so intriguing. Like it uh, is. It just blows my mind every time. And it's always something different. And you just hear just the passion that they have for each other. Mm -hmm. And, oh, man, it just gets you so excited. And in the artistic process, it actually is relevant information in some weird kind of way. You know, it all just You're right. adds into the the crazy mixture formula of an artistic process that in the end gets some better photos. And you guys have a greater connection with maybe, maybe it's that personal that connection that makes better photos in the end. If there was one thing that we drive home every time we talk to a couple is that we are about connection and everything from the first conversation that we have with them to the day of their wedding, we are building a relationship with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, like um, I would say we probably talk a lot longer on the phone um, with people that we aren't even sure are going to book us. Right. We do. We spend and we invest that time because we feel like this is where we figure out whether this works. And it's on both ends, you know, and I feel like when we do that and we invest that little bit of of extra time that maybe somebody else is like, oh my gosh, I've been on the phone for 45 minutes. I can't believe this. <laughs> you know, we got to get this over. We got to get to the next person, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like that's not us. We are really about like, let's, let's figure this out now. And through our communication of who we are, it's going to either bring them into our family of, you know, what we do mm -hmm. as photographers, or it's going to say, you know, we're going to go somewhere else. You know, and if we can establish that right there and not have to deal with that later, then I mean, that's that's a huge win, I feel for us. Yeah. I know that there we have had countless comments um, when when somebody we first talked to someone on over the phone and they're always telling us we looked at your photos and we noticed that there was just such a natural, organic feel to all of them. Mm hmm. And like, and we're just like, oh my gosh, that's, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> Ding -ding. We're trying to, yeah, we want those candid moments. We want the, the journalistic kind of aspect of what we do to, to show. Mm -hmm. um, so then how do we get there? How do we get to the natural moments? How do we get to the candid moments? It's people not feeling awkward in yeah. front of a camera, in front of a random person. Yep. How do you not feel Gotta awkward and... And not feel like somebody's random is you have to actually know them, yeah. you know? And I think that's, that's what I, you know, we just had a conversation with a couple, um, yesterday and it really, we're just having our normal conversation, but it really did hit me. I was like, wait, okay, this is, this is why we do this. <laughs> we, we want the natural <laughs> moments and awkward only happens when you don't know what's happening and you don't know what's about to take place. Yeah. So uh, another thing that we offer is we offer free engagements. It is not any kind of like, oh, free engagement. You know, you got to, <laughs> it's, this is, and a, you know, a deal that we're giving out. And yeah. if you sign up with us this evening, you get the free <laughs> engagement. No, it's not that it's, we need to have a free engagement session with you before yeah. your wedding. It's a great test. It is a great <laughs> test. It's a great place for them to just let down some walls. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just countless times we've had our engagement session and there is always, it's usually the guy, but sometimes <laughs> it's the gal as well, but there's a wall that we break down. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, especially with the guys, the guys just are not. <laughs> What's up with guys yeah, and dads, man? Come I don't on, know. Dude. We just, we feel like we're, <laughs> we're men and we don't want to be in front of a camera and, and get photos. And it's feminine. It's, I don't you know, know. That's for the, for the women. But um, we just had a session this weekend and, and the guy shook my hand and looked me straight in the <laughs> eye and said, thank you. Like, wow. this was great. This was an amazing experience. I came uh, in with, with all these walls and yeah. he came in just thinking, oh my gosh, I, I, 
I can't, you know, and he was communicating it at the beginning. Like, <laughs> I do not want to be here, but I'm he here for, for her. I'm here <laughs> for her. That's the only reason, Ugh. you know. So, but he had a great time with us and we just, we hung out. It's like Rochelle says all the time, we're on a double date because we're going to go have some fun with you, take That's some photos, so cool. hang out, hey, get to know you. Write that you guy know? and ask him to make a little video testimony before it fades in his memory. Seriously, right? <laughs> That's such a good idea. Because that stuff is golden. For the other clients that, that, that come to you, maybe they are self-proclaimed quote unquote awkward people, or mm-hmm. they feel like it will be awkward because they don't know you and they don't know that you get to know them so quickly and so well. And something, a testimony right. like that, uh, I mean, that's a game changer right there. That's awesome. What a cool story. Yeah. I always say, too, whenever we talk to potential clients or clients on the phone, even in email and a lot on our Facebook posts, when they choose us, I want it to feel like we're coming in and we're getting to celebrate alongside them, yeah. their family, their friends. Like, Of course, we're in the middle of it, you know, because we have the cameras and Mm. they've hired us to do all of that. But I still want to be in the middle of everything that's happening that day. And I feel like that's such a key thing for us because I don't want it to ever feel like, oh, we're walking in and this is just a job Mm. because it really isn't. I mean, it pays our bills and it kind of is a job, but I don't want it to ever feel like it's a job because these are our friends. A lot of our clients end up becoming some of our really good friends. Yep, exactly. I, I once heard a businesswoman on a podcast say this, and it just really has stuck with me. She said that um, you have to be who you are. And when you learn that, and when you actually can communicate that through your business, you will attract your dream clients and you will repel the clients that are not for mm-hmm. you. And yeah. I think that is just a huge thing. And um, and that's what we've really kind of strived to be is this is who we are. Deal with it. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, we're going to communicate <laughs> that right off the bat. You know, we're going to show you that we're just we're just a bunch of, you know, lovey, lovey-dovey people that just want to <laughs> connect with you and have some fun and, oh and, you know, bring you into the family. So it's it's real and, and I feel like that's really been – it's real and it's honest, and it's it's yeah. been a huge help for us. I mean, if I meet a client and they just hate Star Wars, they're not my kind of client. <laughs> bye bye. See you. That's so true. Oh, That's so true. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Well, let's transition a little bit more into the technical and uh, some of the behind the scenes business stuff. And I want to start with the marketing question. How do you guys market yourself? Do you market yourself through any means online to reach new clients? Oh, gosh. Um, The marketing world. Yes, we do market ourselves. And I feel like this is just an ongoing learning process. Yeah. Um, I will plug fire and ice photography for just a minute. Um, Christian and Yaki are incredible. They do online workshops and they're actually coming here to Orlando in November and we're going to do their workshop. Um, what's their main focus marketing or they're, they do the whole thing, the whole thing, business, um, photography and and then videography videography as well. There's it's two days, two full days. They've really kind of figured out their marketing and it's incredible to see. We've done an online workshop for marketing with them, and it's just, it's mind blowing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of marketing for us, as we're continuing to learn, um, 90 to 95% of our marketing or our leads or anything that we get are from Facebook paid ads or friend of a friend, referral tags, what? it's sometimes it's referral tags. Sometimes it's friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to be very, very consistent in posting Monday through Friday during peak times for us on Facebook so that it's getting out there and everybody's seeing it. Mm -hmm. Um, Another really helpful tool that I'm starting to figure out and get plugged in with is We have a ton of wedding swap groups on Facebook here in the Tampa area and just Florida in general. I mean, it it takes several hours to get to the other side and several (laughs) hours north and several hours south. 
Mm. So (laughs) I feel like we're kind of in this really good spot. Um, But I've gone through all of those Facebook groups for (laughs) Florida and for Tampa and have written them down. And Mm -hmm. whether or not they allow business posts, if the business posts are free and what days you can post. Yep. So (laughs) technically most of the groups are Monday and Thursday postings. Mm -hmm. So like today, today's Monday, I sat for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so going through 31 groups (laughs) and posting Mm -hmm. in those groups. And it's just like this short, like, Hey, this is who we are. We're a husband and wife (laughs) team. This is what we're all about. We're booking weddings for 2020, 2021. We include two photographers, free engagement for more information. See our website, see our Facebook page, see our Instagram or send me a message. That's cool. And you post a super, you post one of your favorite new photos with that post to get some eye attention. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I usually post anywhere between 15 to 25 photos. Oh, wow. Nice. They can get a good consistent idea of how good you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want them to see like a full range, like yeah. getting ready, ceremony, reception, portraits, bridal party, whether the ceremony was indoors or if it was outdoors, if it was a beach wedding or a church wedding. Mm-hmm. I want them to see kind of a full scope so that they can kind of say, okay, I kind of see their work. Let's go check out their website. And from yeah. there, they can contact us and we can chat with them. Yeah, there's this one of those websites has gotten so big. There's like how many thousands of brides on there? I don't know. It's like thousands upon thousands. Thousands of brides on this one group, you know, and if she's able to just get a few of them of their, you know, their attention, then. I think that's a it's a good investment. Mm-hmm. It is. That's awesome. So you work in local wedding related Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yep. That's interesting. I don't know if I I don't know if there are any groups like that for San Antonio. There probably are. I'm just ignorant of them. Look at look it up like wedding swap. Yeah, groups. I'm not familiar with that term. I need to see if there's that here. Um, yeah. You should. Something I have been working similar to that is just generic local city groups. So I live in Universal City, which is on the east side of San Antonio, and it's a small town. And there's some other small towns uh, next to us, like Schertz, Converse, Cibolo. And some of them have a a decent amount of money, a lot of kind of that mid-range age from like 30 to 50-year-old people here. And, um, you know, so it's a big market. A lot of people that, you know, I, I would love to hire me. So I go to these city groups and I post on the days that I'm allowed to uh, about my various types of photography. And I've gotten business from them. Uh, yeah. So that's that's a similar type of Facebook group. But, yeah, that's that's awesome. Good, good tip. Thank you for that. Is there any other outlets or any other ways you promote yourself that has actually worked? <laughs> um, I know that we've been really I've been really working on the on the SEO stuff. Um, it's there's a lot. Um, and there's just really a lot of consistency with that. Just like Rochelle was saying with Facebook, um, we've been just kind of developing a blog. Um, I know that we're really kind of trying to gear our blog towards not only like recording, um, our, you know, awesome weddings or engagement sessions, but also, um, we're trying to really just be a place where brides can get some ideas or help and thoughts. Um, we've actually featured two venues on our blog. Um, cool. In the past sometimes. few weeks, yeah. Yeah, in the past few weeks. We're actually going to feature the second one this week. But we're just kind of telling people, you know, like, this is what's going on here. And, you know, I, I heard this from somebody else. Um, you got to figure out, you know, first of all, you got to figure out what you're good at when it comes to photography in general and, and what you want to go after. And we've kind of figured that the, the wedding is where we want to go. Mm-hmm. Then um, you got to kind of start developing an, an, a niche market. And um, there's a lot of actually, it's funny, like you think of beach a lot here, but there's actually a lot of barn venues. Yeah. And there's a lot of them popping Would up Would not now. expect that. <laughs> right. And <laughs> one thing. of our, probably one of our first weddings that we did was at a barn and it was a beautiful barn. And we just had a blast there. Mm-hmm. And we just were like, oh my gosh, barn weddings are for us. So I feel like that's one of our niche markets. And so we're trying to find some vendors um, that we can kind of feature and really just kind of 
tag, you know, barn chic, you know, weddings and shabby chic weddings and stuff like yeah. that. So that, you know, when people are searching on Google that they're going to, they're going to pull us up. So we're finding vendor venues that we want to shoot at and we're trying to feature them so that, you know, people want to that's get awesome. us in there with them. So, yeah. So, so connecting and, and being, you know, cozying up to local venues, uh, is, is one good avenue, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yes. exactly. Vendors in general, just yeah, true. connecting with vendors is a huge thing. Um, there's so many <laughs> vendors, um, aren't photographers, and yeah. they try to get some iPhone pictures and stuff. So when a professional is able oh, to yeah. provide them with some pictures that they can use for their website or, that. you know, Instagram or stuff. I mean, that's just a, that's a huge help for them, you know, and it's a great way to connect with them. Vendors or friend doors, as we call them, are <laughs> huge because what happens is you find that handful of vendors that you work really well with. Right. Yep. And, you know, obviously being in all of these wedding groups, somebody's always looking for something. Oh, yeah. So you can easily just say, hey, I know so-and-so does this for what you're looking for, and they're amazing. And in return, usually they tag you back when somebody's looking for a photographer or whatever. Um, Honestly, those have been some of our greatest and our most treasured relationships Mm -hmm. lately. Mm -hmm. Because you're getting to be a part of what they're doing and they get to be a part of what you're doing. And then hopefully in some of these weddings, you guys get to work together and the day just goes smoother when you're working with people that you already know and you already trust. When I finish a wedding, what I do is I get all the business cards from them and I have a, a Google sheet, um, Cause you know, no one actually uses Excel anymore. It's all Google sheets. <laughs> right. uh, so I have a Google sheet with all my vendors and I have the category, their number, website, like all the data that I can get off their business card. And then some, um, even what I thought about them, which wedding they served at that I um, will recognize. I have all that information on a growing Excel sheet and it's really awesome for brides because I can say, Hey, these are like the four food vendors I worked with last and they were actually good. Cause I was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm, they're not paying me to say this. I'm saying this in my own free, you know, experience. So that's really great to have. And of course, once the client has all their photos and they're happy with them, now it's the fun part. I get to send all the vendor product photos to the vendors and right. with my yep. logo, of course, with my logo and some restrictions like, Hey, you can't use this in print or commercial use, but social media is good. And they love that. So yeah, yeah. Good, good tip for growth right there. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's helping them grow too. So yeah, it's a two way street. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, continuing on this uh, technical look into how things work behind the curtain, what equipment do you guys use? Uh, There's cameras, favorite lenses and lights. Um, Camera wise, we just switched over from Nikon to Fuji. We are fully Fuji right now. Um, (laughs) I have the X-T3 and Aaron shoots on the X-T2 and between the two of us, we share... The 23 millimeter, which is the equivalent of 35. Oh, okay. We have, well, I have an F2 23, and then she has a 1.4. 1.4. 23. <laughs> and then we have a 56, which is the equivalent of 85, 1.2, mm-hmm. and a 90, which is the 135 F2. Macro. Cool. Yeah. That's good for ring photos, right? It's actually not a macro. Oh, um, yeah, that's true. This one's little, not. I think it's a little longer than a mm-hmm. macro. Because it's actually comparable to the 135 if you're if you're full frame. Yeah. Um, so that's so, good for portraits then or far away Yeah, portraits. we get yeah. some really, it's, you know, when you want that just really nice compression behind, um, we pull that thing out and just, it's just really nice. It's, it's got like beautiful. a little bit of swirl to it. And oh, yeah. Brings Dwarf. that background right up to them. And, I've got a 100 you know, millimeter 2.8 that is amazing for macros. Like I can fill the whole, I can almost fill the whole frame up with two rings. <laughs> it's really awesome. Nice. But that's a macro yeah. specifically. You know, what we did is, um, or I guess Rochelle was doing for Nikon, she was just doing an attachment that went on top of, what was it? What lens were you using for that? 35? Um, swapping between the 35 and the 85. Yeah. It would just clip on the front and then she'd crop because it had this black vignette um, all the way around it. Um, but we just got, it's an actual ring that goes underneath oh. the lens before the lens. 
Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's an extension tube. So it gives you closer and focusing closer too. Right, yep. exactly. So she uses that for our macro stuff, right? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. There's also a thing called a lens flipper, which will actually screw onto the uh, filter screw of the front of your lens, and then that attaches to your front camera body. So your lens is literally backwards, and that can magnify your image up to like 2x, which is really wow. weird. <laughs> you ever that heard of that? That is so cool. I have not heard of that. That's a cool Yeah. They're, not That's for awesome. every lens, but um, you know, because of the, the thread size and all that stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. lens flipping is the thing. It's pretty odd. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, what about lights? What do you guys like to use? <laughs> well, we're trying to figure that out. Um, we've been with Flashpoint for a while. Um, and the reason why we went with Flashpoint is because we just we saw that it was very versatile when it came to um, cameras and like, you know, any brand could kind of hook into this as long as you had a remote for it. So we ended up buying like a Canon remote so that when we were with people that were shooting Canon that we could use it, you know, we mm -hmm. could hand that to them and they could share. But um, we've been having a lot of struggle with getting our lights to fire properly. Huh. And I've done updates. I've um, asked questions. We've returned things and gotten wow. new ones. And, and we're still having a little bit of that. So I really just need to sit down and, and just, <laughs> troubleshoot this thing and, it sounds and like get this it, squared away. I, I hear nothing but good stuff about all the Godox products that have been coming out lately. Like they're kind of just running the show with even with speed lights and strobes. So I know, and uh, us too. And and we when when it's working properly, we love it. It's and great. It's been great. Um, but it's just been lately, and I I know that we did switch to Fuji, so I don't know if that's part of it. And I, I know that probably Fuji is one of the last people to get these flashes and stuff <laughs> so i don't know if that's maybe the issue mm -hmm. um but we maybe. have heard that other nikon people have had struggles with it too so i don't You're know but alone. it's very important and we need to know that because reception <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's a must you have to have you have to know flash you know and you have to know it yeah yep. awesome now what about software what do you guys use for everything i strictly use lightroom mm -hmm. Unless a photo has to be retouched, simple retouching, <laughs> I'll drag it into Photoshop and do that in Photoshop. Um, I really don't know a lot of Photoshop. <laughs> I'm shamelessly saying that, but thankfully Aaron does know his way around Photoshop. Save the and day. <laughs> can yes. take over when I need him nice. to really fix something. So, yeah. so when a bride wants 50 pounds taken off of 200 <laughs> photos of her, like that's all Aaron? <laughs> that's all Aaron you know what that's that's uh, not anyone we're like uh yeah we don't do that <laughs> sorry that is true but every once in a while there's a head swap or yep. you got to take some random thing out of a picture yeah, and, Uncle Bob or a piece yeah, of trash exactly yeah um you know what I've noticed too is there is Lightroom has a healing brush but man it's it does not, not even touch no. what Photoshop's healing brush does it's just spectacular so it's a great transition that they've got going on now, Adobe has with Lightroom and Photoshop. So it's easy just to pop it right in to mm -hmm. Photoshop through Lightroom. Um, and I feel like, you know, it is technically faster probably to stay in Lightroom, but when you're trying to do something like healing and stuff like that, it's just, yeah. it's so much quicker in Photoshop. My workflow is basically I do all my Lightroom edits until I know for sure that I'm like completely done with anything Lightroom can do. Then mm -hmm. I export as JPEGs, full size, full quality, and then I Photoshop those. And then I'm done after that. That's that's my flow. I don't like to do the sending a raw file over to Photoshop then send it back because it makes a ginormous TIFF file and it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. We do that and it seems to be working all right. Yeah, it works good. It just takes up extra space. Yeah, it, it does. does. It does. Um, our business side is Sprout Studio. Studio. Tell me about that. What does that do and why do you like it? It is like an all-in-one. It's um, amazing. It's specifically what's really neat about it is it's. It's a business platform that is specifically made for photographers. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And so I actually found out about it because I had been listening to their podcast for a long time, Sprout um, Photography, and they were very business related when they talk um, and they, they just want to, they want to teach these photographers business. And, you know, there's a lot of people that we, we want to do photos, but we have no idea how to do the business side. And, and I was like, man, that I can relate to that. I really want to learn this. So they've really helped me really grasp a lot of the business side of stuff. And then when we incorporated their software, 
it just took us to a whole nother level. Cool. Um, there's, uh, there's a ton of automation that you can do when it comes to emails. Um, <clears throat> you can workflow, yeah, workflow, your galleries. Um, all of our galleries are, um, in sprout. Huh, so what's cool. really cool is you, you know, you, from beginning to end, when you first, um, connect, what we do is we, let's, let's kind of give you a, an overview through yeah. kind of a system of how it works. So, what we've done is we've put our forms on our websites. You're going to put all your information. Like a client comes and says, I want to do a family session. So mm -hmm. they put in their information. They hit submit. That information is going straight to Sprout. And mm -hmm. all the stats and questions that we've asked is actually being put into Sprout as well. Then um, we're able to reply, but we're also able to label our replies, like say we've replied twice, we can put second reply, or we can tell we can tell what process we're in when it comes to that client, mm -hmm. um, and so we you know can kind of update that and keep, keep track that of the going. process exactly. Yeah. And so then we're Rochelle's emailing through that and communicating with them. Then um, they are pay they are they are invoiced yep. through the program as well. The nice. program will send an invoice to them and they can pay through credit card, debit card, whatever they have or mm -hmm. whatever they, you know, makes sense. They can pay right there on the spot, get that going, sends it back to us, tells us that it's pay been paid in full. And then um, we go to the session, we have the session, we come back after our editing and we upload this gallery and it is also in the system with their name attached, all of it. And boom, cool. they get their photos sent out and they can check out a beautiful gallery. It's um, got a lot of different features that they mm -hmm. continue to update when it comes to um, how the gallery looks. And it's been just a huge thing. And then what's amazing as well is that as long as we're running everything through the program, we can go to reports and it can tell us how much we've made for the year and how much we have wow. coming for the next month, Numbers, the month yay. after that, how much we have <laughs> coming for the rest of the year. You know, it's just really, really nice. And it's saved my butt a lot because <laughs> you know, organizing that financial side is really my job. Um, but the Sprout Studio is just really... That's helped great. us and, and it really just made it a lot easier and streamlined it. Was it made by photographers? Yes. Yes, it was. There you go. Um, mm -hmm. Some of my favorite features, it, well, number one, it keeps me super organized and lets me know exactly where I am, where I am with all of our different clients, especially since we're juggling families, we're juggling seniors, we're juggling weddings, engagement shoots. It's it gets a little crazy. Um, mm. They also have a place for each client section to where you can track your mileage. You cool. can keep track of mm. anything that you spend for that client or whatever. I'm pretty old school when it comes to this. So I have a notebook that I write everything down in and a folder where I keep all of our receipts. But it's just so easy that it's like all in one place. And I don't have to go searching to so many different other programs to keep track of all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And it makes it so much easier. And then to top it all off, you get calls from the owners. Yep. About every base, three months. Wow. And giving <laughs> us thoughts and ideas on how we can make our business better and grow and, you know, features of the software that maybe we're not taking advantage of that we could be using to help us. Um, it's just like... They just have really gone above and beyond to make sure that their customers are getting everything. And then a great side thing is that they have their podcast that is very business related that, that cool. really kind of just coincides with this whole idea of their software. Hey, so, check that out. I love me some podcasts. <laughs> yes, it's such a good, I mean, they're, they've done a ton of podcasts and they have so much good information when it comes to business and, and getting yourself out there and, and doing it right. So that's great. It's really great. I know they have a scheduler coming out soon and I'm yes. so, so, so excited yep. for this yeah. calendar <laughs> to where our clients can pick their day and pick their time. And cool. I don't have to keep track of all of that too. Nice. So that's great for many sessions. If you do back to back type stuff or events. That'd yes. Be useful. Yeah. Cool. Hoping um, the beginning of next year it comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now, I was going to ask how you deliver your photos, but I'm assuming that, like you said, the galleries, uh, is that similar to like Pass and Pixie Set? It, it, yep. it is. It's very similar. It's very cool. similar. It's very easy. Yep. Awesome. And the contracts are all, 
in- integrated as well? Yep. Cool. Our contracts are there. Our clients can sign them electronically, thankfully, so I don't have to go to the post office a thousand times oh, yeah. a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so 2000 and late. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been using a free service called uh, VeriSign and just digitally sends it to them. They read it, they sign it digitally, and it comes back and uh, done. So yep, that's the same concept the with Sprout. Cool. Uh, now, going back a little bit to when we were talking about Lightroom and Photoshop, are you guys fans of uh, presets? Do you, do you all like presets? Do you prefer to do it yourself? What, what, where is that? what happens in that area? <laughs> I'm a huge preset yeah. girl. <laughs> okay. I mean, we have... Oh, I don't know. Hundreds of <laughs> yeah. different presets. We do. Um, but I think we have our main ones or main one that we stick to for pretty much everything. And then I usually tweak it pretty heavily to get to where I want it to be and the look that yeah. I want. So it's partly their version and partly my version. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like a starting point for your edit. Yep. Yeah. And, so you, you like know, we really believe in keeping things consistent, um, mm-hmm. you know, Instagram, Facebook, when you're posting that when people are looking at your photos, that there's just not this mass difference between <laughs> sessions and weddings He's the same and stuff. photographer who did all these yeah, pictures. <laughs> exactly. Right. We, we just, we want them to say, all right, this is who they are. And if I don't like that, I probably should look for someone else. If I really like it, then this is, this is the place to go because we're going to get that and we're not going to get something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not a gamble. consistency is huge. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll share a little embarrassing moment or not technically embarrassing, but in the very beginning, I remember doing photos for some really good friends of ours and each photo had a different edit to it. And I used to sit there thinking, oh, my gosh, this is so cool that they're getting a different edit for each photo. <laughs> I did that, too. Guilty. <laughs> but looking back, I'm like, what were you thinking? Yep. I did that with y'all's <laughs> engagement photos. I was like, ooh, cool. This one has a dual tone. <laughs> this one's black and white. And then I hope to God I didn't do a selective color. Oh. I knew better to at least not do that one I hope, I don't remember (laughs) Every once in a while you see somebody post one like that It's like, like, why? Are you even living under a rock? I don't know I'm trying not to be mean, but come on guys We've seen some pretty fantastic ones It's hilarious (laughs) That's one way to put it (laughs) Like, why is that trash can in the background blue And everything else is black and white? We don't know (laughs) Right? Why are his shoes pink and nothing else looks like it's alive? We'll never know That's the best. (laughs) All right. Well, let's close out this episode with two open-ended questions. And I really hope that these questions or rather the answers from y'all will help any photographers listening that want to really jump out into the wedding world. They want to take it to the next level. So my first question is, and this is kind of to both of you, maybe you have different answers, maybe not, is what is some advice you'd give someone wanting to make wedding photography a career? Honestly, right off the bat, I would say second shooting. Yeah. If you even want to consider weddings, <laughs> second shoot, because there's a flow to weddings that you're not going to find anywhere else besides <laughs> second shooting. Thankfully, <laughs> right. th- that is very true. You screwed up your first time. <laughs> Thankfully, um, the company that we got to shoot for when we started out, they... Uh, fully believed in us. They fully trusted us. <laughs> um, they honestly, they have been huge for us because it's not every day that you're going to find a company whose owner will just take you in, not really having had any wedding experience and just say, okay, here, run with it. Here's our timeline. Here's kind of what we expect. Here's what we look for. Okay, go. Mm-hmm. But the owner has, been, he's been amazing He's been so encouraging through all of it. I There's been days where he sat on the phone with me for an hour teaching me off-camera flash. And <laughs> that's huge, you mm-hmm. know, because in a lot of different markets, it's always you're in competition with somebody else. But here, it's been amazing because we have so many people in this market And it's been more about community over competition and helping other people. And that's been huge. Like 
they've taught us timeline. Timelines are huge. Our very first wedding, I had no clue. They didn't have a timeline. Oh, I didn't know how to put a timeline us. together. Yep. And you have to have that. You have to be organized for somebody else's day. So really, if I could say one thing, if you're really considering wedding photographer, find somebody that you feel like you can connect with and who's going to encourage you and ask them to second shoot. Even if you start off just saying, hey, I'll carry your bags. I'll set up yeah, your light stands. Just observe. Whatever you need me to do, can I please just tag along so that I can learn how to do this? Yeah, you know, there's there's been some amazing, very well-established photographers that we've gotten to um, second shoot for. And they started that way. They started just not... they really weren't even sure about weddings and all that stuff. And they were just carrying equipment and helping with lights and stuff like that. And then yeah. they started second shooting. It, and it's the safest legally and creatively. It's the safest way to start. Right. And it's just better all around. You get to observe it risk-free, um, you know, unless you're like a total klutz and you like trip and fall into the cake, but <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that might happen. I don't know. Uh, there's actually a video compilation on YouTube of, of cakes falling or people falling oh, into them. Oh, oh I gotta see that. It's hard to watch. It's cringy. <laughs> it's painful for people like us. Um, it makes me just stay away from the cake at all times. But um, yeah, it's, it's the safest and best way to get going, you know, in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, you know, jumping. here's the thing too. Go ahead. We have, um, uh, Rochelle's sister that she's been starting to get into weddings and stuff. And a struggle that she was having at the beginning was nobody wanted to even give her a chance. Huh. And I don't know, it's, it seems like the Colorado community is a little bit different when it comes to that. Um, but, you know, we were talking her through it and, and stuff. And I feel like one of the biggest things that you do have to have is you have to have some sort of maybe, you know, a couple's portfolio and you're just doing some free engagement shoots or something like that mm -hmm. get something really solid that you can give them so they can kind of see okay they they know what they're doing yeah they can use a camera um, <laughs> right exactly because you you do kind of have to get into it and you got to get some things under your belt in order to really um have the opportunity it's like rochelle said like we had this just amazing opportunity that um that our friend jen helped us get there. And, and I think that was just a huge, 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 um, launching pad for us. So hmm. that's, that's great. That's really good. All right. Next question is what is a piece of equipment or just a resource of any kind that's been a game changer for y'all? Um, honestly, for me, the biggest game changer has been <laughs> Sprout Studio yeah. and just being able to stay organized and stay on top of everything between, Running a full-time business and having two kids and homeschooling two kids full-time, it's chaos. <laughs> I feel like we live in a state of chaos all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And Sprout Studio is that one place that I can log into and say, okay, this is where I am. This is what I need to accomplish today. This is who I need to contact today. And it's so easy for me to see. Um I think Aaron will probably agree on this. The second thing is Hopefully. SLR Lounge. Oh, yeah. We pay for their subscription every year. And it's got an abundance of anything and everything that you could possibly ever need. Right. So what what all do you get from their membership? Tutorial or um, master class uh -huh. that they put out. As long as you're doing the yearly subscription you get access to all of it cool. um so it's been amazing to see where they you know we started with them oh, probably three years ago yeah and it's, i mean if you want to get into weddings i mean they have the beginning to the end um from from the day first of all you know shooting the day mm -hmm. um they talk about poses they talk about you know bride prep groom prep detail shots um, then they go into, you know, the, the ceremony and what you need to get and how you should set up, what lenses you should use for that. And cool. then they go into the reception, what lights should you be using? How should you position your lights? Um, they go through all that. Then they go to the business side and they talk about how do you start your relationship with your clients? 
when it comes to your wedding couples and and then it goes through all that. And then if you're not even a wedding photographer, if you want to do birth photography, they've got a whole mm-hmm. course on that. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, they just have everything. It's I feel like they just started and then there's just a bunch of people that photographers that join them. Yeah. And now they've got all these masters inside wow. of it that are just teaching this this stuff. And they've got a lighting lighting courses. They just came out with lighting four, I think, which is their fourth course on on OCF. Mm-hmm. And uh just I mean, it's just incredible. And I feel like we have not had a ton of time to really invest in in learning and stuff when it comes to being on there. Yeah. And I really think we need to get back to it because there's just so much and there's you gotta keep learning. You, know, you can't yeah, you can't stop learning mm-hmm. and you can't stop growing. So that's excellent. Well, I knew about the website, but I, I haven't really like pursued them. So I didn't really know that they did the whole course membership thing. And that sounds like it's been really some really a lot of good content on there. Yeah, awesome. you know, and really we haven't used it too much this year, but mm-hmm. we've got a price that that we're locked into. And I'm I think we're just gonna continue subscribing and yeah. And when we do have opportunity to like I oh the SEO stuff. That's they had like a twelve week course and each week cool. they had assignments and they were they have groups and you're you're grouped in with these people and mm-hmm. commenting and stuff and and learning off of each other so i mean there's another example and i've i've actually been using that this year and that's been very helpful so if if that's the only thing i i got then that's great <laughs> well that is awesome thank you guys so much for sharing all this information with us and uh yes absolutely I think this is really going to benefit some photographers out there. And even if it doesn't, it's going to benefit me by golly. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely inspired and I got some really good uh, information out of you guys. So thank you so much. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having us. And it was such an honor to be a part of this and know that, you know, you've been doing it for so long and that we mm-hmm. can we can kind of give back to what you gave us inspiring <laughs> us. So I, I, I'm, I'm taking credit that I inspired you guys. Okay. I'm yes. going to claim it. <laughs> Name it, claim it. Yes. <laughs> you really, and I, I remember we had some phone call conversations at the beginning of this whole thing, and you definitely helped us kind of wrap our heads around how we get started and, and get this uh, thing going. So that's we appreciate great. you. Well, I don't know everything, but I do know a few things. And uh, those things I do know, I love to share because I didn't have anyone to help me when I started. You know, there was a few people actually in Austin, uh, Chris, he lent me his camera. And yes, Chris. I did my first professional wedding with that setup. I think it was a Canon 5D Mark One or Two. I don't even remember what the model was, but it was awesome. And that's what got me started. But other than him, I didn't have any Facebook groups, any, you know, memberships to learn from, no YouTube channels, no podcast, nothing. And I learned the hard way. It took me a lot of wasted years. <laughs> so yeah. I like to give back in a sense to people that I don't even know yet. I like to help and share my information. So uh, you awesome. guys are helping in that. Um, now, one more time, where can the listeners find your stuff online? Because uh, I definitely want them to follow and check you guys out. They can find us on Facebook at Paisley Sunshine Photography. Instagram is at Paisley Sunshine Photo. Mm-hmm. And then our family website is PaisleySunshine.com. And for all of our weddings and couples, it's PaisleySunshineWed.com. Awesome. Great. Thank you for that. It's been great hearing from you guys again. I miss you and uh, you'll have a good night. Uh, We miss you too. You too. We miss you, Daniel. Thank you so much for having us. My pleasure. Thanks again. Bye. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. You can also find our previous episodes there and listen whenever you want. We love to hear from our listeners. So if you have any comments or suggestions for future episodes, you can reach us at tvvpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.